know that as we grow, the hurdles will be more. Each time we are washed away, we bounce back to the shore. We know we lead the way, keeping odds at bay. See the sunrise tomorrow, inspire the world to follow. Okay, I am Sumanto Kondo, Assistant Professor of Department of Electrical Engineering of Narola Institute of Technology. So, today we are going to start module number 3 of the course curriculum E701 Electric Drives and in module number 3 we will going to cover starting of electric drive. So, let us start lecture number 8. Before we proceed further into the details of this course uh, topic, we should know what is our course objective or other outcome. So, uh, let us have a glance with the objective and outcome of the today's topic. So, this is my course objective or course outcome. So, let us start starting of starting of electric drives. So, starting of electric drives. Okay. Now, so electric drives we have discussed that uh, it has become the most essential equipment nowadays for electrical motors okay, or for rotating machine. And basically we have no from our concept of electrical machines or our basic concept of electric drives that electric drives mainly used to perform three prime work that is starting, speed control and braking. So, we can say that electric drives enable us to control the electric motor in every aspects and steady state condition is not my lookout, but in transient condition that is in case of changing terminal voltage, current, etc., where there is a chance of damage the motor temporarily or permanently, this control of electric drive is very essential. Okay. So, now when we have studied our basics, we know that uh, for steady state condition, this uh, load torque equals to motor torque. That means, this load torque counterbalance this motor torque and opposite to each other. Now, for a uh, given speed, for a particular speed, we can adjust this uh, two mechanical uh, parameter of uh, motor output that is uh, speed that is omega rad per second and torque that is in Newton meter we can we can control these two parameters and by adjusting these two parameter we can get a waveform of speed versus torque curve such that this condition maintained TL equals to TM or also by varying this steady state curve of torque versus omega so that this TL versus TM is maintained we can get varying speed. So, this both are possible. Okay. Now, if we look into this torque versus speed curve, so this is my torque versus speed curve. Okay. So, if we look into this so, this is my speed versus torque curve. Now, by adjusting motor parameter, that is what I have uttered just few minutes back, omega or t, we can get this curve number 1 and this is for speed omega m1. Now, suppose the speed is changed from omega m1 to omega m2. So, then we will get this curve and this is my load torque. So, in both condition you see that uh, 
this is for omega m on speed omega m on speed and this is for omega 2 speed okay and this uh, uh, steady state operation that is load torque equals to motor torque is maintained okay now we have discussed that four quadrant operation right in our previous lecture classes four quadrant operation we have discussed so if we quickly recall this four quadrant operation we know that uh, this positive x axis this is positive y axis is a clockwise rotation of respectively torque and uh, the rotation and taken as positive so these two quadrant that is 1 and 3 is the motoring operation and 2 and 4 is braking operation because we know in these two quadrant the power is positive power is positive and in this condition too power is negative we have discussed so far because if we see here here both speed and torque are positive greater than 0 so this is negative axis so here torque is negative but speed is positive so power is negative here also the speed is negative and torque is also negative so again as power equals to t into omega so both negative so it will give positive result of power that means will get mechanical power as output and here this uh, omega is negative but torque is positive so the power is negative that means uh, that electrical energy is fed back to the supply so in this context if we see a real example of uh, operation of a hoist or lift so here we see in these two quadrant which one is this motoring operation that is quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So, here you see that here this is a loaded cage and this is a pulley arrangement and the motor is controlling this two counterweight is connected with this motor. Now, in this quadrant the loaded cage weight is greater than the counter weight and I am trying to uplift this uh, loaded cage. Okay. So, definitely the rotation will be in anti-clockwise direction so anti-clockwise rotation omega now as this uh, weight is higher than this counter weight so the load torque will work in clockwise direction and from steady state operation we know that with whatever may be the direction of load torque motor torque will act exactly opposite to the load torque so here you see that uh, the load torque and the rotation of the motor is opposite to each other similar thing if you see in this quadrant the load torque and motor rotation is opposite to each other that means it in this quadrant 1 and 2 the motoring operation is happening and this motoring operation is depends on the direction of the rotation and according to that it will decide whether it is a forward motoring or it is a reverse motoring operation. In quadrant 2, if we see this is a empty cage and this is the counterweight. So, the weight of counterweight is now greater than this empty cage and I am trying to lowering this empty cage, but as this weight is higher, so load torque is acts in this direction. Now, if we see when the load is active, load is active means loaded hoist is lowered. So, this is my loaded hoist and I am trying to lowering this waste. So, now this is active motor is motor load is active condition and what is the other active condition? Now, here this empty cage and the counter weight is higher than this empty cage. Again, I am trying to afflicting this empty cage. So, I am quadrant 2, I am trying to uplifting this empty cage and quadrant 4, I am trying to lowering this loaded cage in this both this condition the load is active and if we look that in this both cases the load torque and the motor rotation 
load torque and the motor rotation are assisting each other that means the load torque has changed its sign the load torque has changed its sign okay so we know that at steady state the motor torque opposes load torque okay so in these two condition the braking operation is occurring now if you if you have to uh, maintain the steady state so what we have to do we have to adding a mechanical brake and that only a steady state can be obtained now we can say drive is operating in quadrant 2 and 4 depending on the rotation it will depends whether it is a forward braking or reverse braking basically the electric power is generating and it is fed back to the motor and this load torque has changed its signs and it is assisting the rotation of the motor. So, previously it was opposing the rotation of the motor in motoring operation, but in braking operation it is, it is assisting the operation of the motor. So, in quadrant 1 and 3 it is opposing opposing whereas in quadrant 2 and 4 it is assisting so this is the this is the interesting fact so when it is assisting the motor rotation load torque is assisting means active load is there so the motor is in regeneration mode okay and we have to provide mechanical brake to obtain the steady state that is to fulfill the condition tl equals to t now this uh, mechanical brake has certain disadvantage like uh, it's a required frequency maintenance replace of brake shoe is required in regular interval its life is lesser and the most important thing braking power is always wastage as a heat braking power is always wastage at a heat now i can we can overcome this by using electrical braking now electrical braking motor is made to work as generator as we have mentioned converting mechanical energy into electrical energy and producing torque in the direction so as to oppose the motion so my main motto is providing of electrical braking that it should oppose the motor rotation so motor rotation you look it is in clockwise direction but load torque in anti clockwise direction and quadrant 2 also the similar thing happening that means in braking operation even electrical braking in employed when mechanical brake may also provide that means in spite of providing electrical braking we additionally provide mechanical braking for the reliable operation of the drive and mechanical brake also employed to hold the drives at standstill because many braking methods are not able to produce torque at standstill so there is possibilities that in standstill condition there is a no production of torque we have seen in our basic knowledge of electrical machine so in that condition to keep the motor in standstill condition we require this mechanical brake now this uh, chapter that is in control of electric drives or rather we can say starting of electric drives we will discuss mainly three modes of operation of this electric drive that is steady state operation that is steady state operation second is acceleration including starting and third operation is deacceleration including stopping so let's discuss all these three things that is acceleration including starting deacceleration including stopping 
and already we have discussed the steady state things just now. So, let us start discussion on these two things. So, acceleration including starting. Now, we are going to discuss these two topic acceleration including starting and deacceleration including st stopping uh, with a speed transition path graph in speed dot curve in a very simple fashion. Now, to quick recapitulation, uh, we know that acceleration and deacceleration both are transient operation, okay. Both are transient operation and this uh, drive operation and this drive operation in acceleration mode whenever the increase in speed is required. So, when there is a requirement of increase in speed, we use this drive operation, okay. Now, for the motor speed torque curve which we have discussed earlier, when the acceleration takes place, when the motor torque is greater than the leg torque, then only it is possible and time taken for this given change in speed is depends on the inertia of the motor load system. Higher the inertia, the more time it will take to speed up and also the amount by which motor torque exit the load torque. So, if it is this Tm is very, very, very higher than this Tl. So, it will take lesser time, okay. And this uh, uh, increase in motor torque is accompanied by motor current. So, when the, there is an increase in torque, there is an increase of motor current. So, you, we should know this current is detrimental for the motor safe operation and that care should be taken to restrict this motor current within a safe value for both the motor and power modulator otherwise there is a possibility that it can destroy these two things. Now, in the application where this acceleration period require long time, the current should not cross the rated value otherwise it, it can damage both the motor and the power modulator, okay. But when the acceleration is taken for a short duration of period, in that time it is possible that for certain period of time this higher current rated more than that rated current flow through during acceleration. And if it is a closed loop drives where the first response is required, we intentionally force the motor current to cross that rated current because there is a feedback path so we can we can uh, we can we can sense it and we can we can control the current before it goes detrimental for the motor so in closed loop operation we intentionally increase the motor current to achieve the high acceleration okay now now torque developed by an AC motor for a given current is basically a function of motor control method is applied in that particular application. For high performance drive methods which produce high torque per ampere of motor current are employed. Now, if we see in this curve that where this uh, A is the operating point, this A is the operating point for a speed of omega m1. Now, I want to shift this operating point from A to B, okay. And the speed is also correspondingly increased at a higher level of omega m2. Now, look in this two case, this is, this is my load torque, uh, motor torque and for this operation, this is my load torque. So, it is almost constant both this operating point A and B, the motor torque is held constant during acceleration. So, it will follow the path A 
d1 d1 b okay and this from 1 to 5 shown the motor speed torque curve and here we are discussing the starting and starting is the special case of acceleration where the speed changes from 0 to our rated speed suppose 1500 rpm from it is the special case of acceleration where speed change from 0 to a desired speed now now this all applicable for acceleration during starting now what i have mentioned earlier that maximum current allowed should not only be cross the safe limit of the motor modulator but at the same time we have to keep in mind as the current is increasing during acceleration so the voltage drop is also increasing so we have to keep drop in source voltage within a acceptable limits okay now a number of methods are available for limiting this starting current uh, in ac motor the starting current per ampere has different values for different starting method when the starting takes place at no load or light load the method which low starting torque can be employed no load at light load low starting torque is required in ampere now when the motor must start with substantial load torque the amount of load torque is no more negligible we cannot negligible this substantial load torque or when the first start is required we have employed that high starting torque method high starting torque method we have we employed high starting torque method we employed now in some application where the starting requirements smooth like trucks and purpose when jerking of the passenger is not allowed so this is achieved by uh, increasing the starting torque in steplessly so in smooth very smooth increase very smooth increase so the steps are very less so stepless operation is from zero value has been done and that is known as soft start okay now if we discuss motor starting in uh, deacceleration condition now if we discuss motor starting and deacceleration condition now deacceleration means that motor operation is decreasing the speed as simple as that now when deacceleration occurs that means the motor torque is less than lead torque because if it is higher then acceleration occurs and mechanical brakes may be used to produce this deacceleration process okay now now during this uh, braking operation both this uh, uh, motor and load torque opposes the motion both motor and load torque opposes motion thus producing larger deacceleration now both has to oppose the motion because we have seen in quadrant 2 and 3 that the load torque assist the rotation of the motor but for deacceleration both motor and load has to oppose the motion then only it will produce the larger deacceleration during electrical braking this motor current is kept in the safe limit okay now if we see in this graph figure so if you see that during transition from point e now this point a to i am going want to go in point 
C. Okay, that means from speed omega m1, my aim is to achieve the lower speed omega m3. That means deacceleration speed is reducing. Now, when this deacceleration is carried out using electrical braking at a constant braking torque, the operating point moves along this path A, D3, E3, C. This A, D3, E3, C. Look, here the torque has remained, braking torque remained in constant value. So, you should keep that in mind. When the acceleration is carried out using electrical braking at a constant braking torque, both are pit cut constant braking torque. So, it will follow the path A, D3, E3, C. Okay. Now, when sufficient load torque is present or when mechanical brake is used, the operation takes place along this path A, D2, E2, C. Because that time braking torque is not required because enough load torque is present and we are using the mechanical brake. So, stopping is a special case of deacceleration where the speed of a running motor is changed to 0 or reduced to 0. Now, all this deacceleration point is applicable for stopping method also. Now, in application require frequent, quick, accurate and rapid emergency stop. There we use electrical braking. There we as mentioned we use electrical braking. Okay. Now, why electrical braking? Now, it allows smooth and quick stop without subjecting the mechanical parts to unduly large stresses. That means, in suburban electrical train, where, uh, with, we, we, in trucks and purpose, which is our in local electrical train, in that case, it is required that suddenly we have to put the deacceleration to stop the train for some reason, for signal reason, for any other emergency condition. Emergency stop is required. So, smooth braking is required and use of electrical braking allows the smooth braking without causing any inconvenient to the passenger or increasing the life of the track or wheels. So, the cost is reduced. So, this is the basic fundamental of starting of electric motors during starting deacceleration all this condition ok. So, this is uh, all about uh, starting of uh, induction motor or rather we can say control of electric drives. Uh, in our next class we will start the module number 5 that is uh, induction motor drive ok. So, these are the reference books which will help you to study the electric drives also help to follow my lecture ok. So, thank you very much.